Now back in here, basically the idea is that when you click on the pause button, you want to make the pause property on the state true because you basically pause the timer. On the same note, if you click on the resume button, you want to make the pause property false because the countdown timer will no longer be paused, it's going to be active. Okay. So let's do the following here. So the way you communicate between the countdown timer itself, countdown GS, and controls GS, the controls component, right? The way you do that is also through properties. So here we have a paused property, and that's basically a representation of the state inside of the countdown timer. The thing about state is that state is internal or private. So the state that we have in countdown timer is only private to that specific component. It's not visible to any components either above countdown timer like app.js because, um, because countdown timer is a child of app.js. But it's also not available to controls.js because controls.js is a child of countdown. So the state inside countdown, it's only available to countdown.js component or file itself. So to make that state available, we basically pass it through the props to controls. But now we also want to be able to pass some kind of behavior for the buttons. And the behavior that I'm talking about is going to be the following. I'm going to add a new method. Let's call it toggle paused. All this is going to do is it's basically going to set this state, okay? And it's going to basically do the following. It's going to set pause to not this state pause. So it's going to set the pause property on the state to the opposite of whatever the pause property was before on the state. So if it was false before, it's going to set it to true. It's going to negate it. If it was true, it's going to make it false. Okay, so that's what toggle means. It's basically going to toggle the property. Now we want to pass that method as a property to controls. So we're going to have, let's call it on paused toggle. And let's pass in that method. Actually, we need to do this dot toggle pause because we need to reference the component, right? And once that property is there, we need to also add it in here. And let's do this. I'm going to add that property on the on click event. So whenever you click the button, that method is going to fire. In fact, let's go back to countdown timer. Let's do console log clicked. So we know that once we click either one of the buttons, it's going to execute this method, okay? And let's actually prove that it works, okay? We get an error. So the error here says that you cannot read property set state of undefined. The way to fix it is to bind this component to this function. One of the traditional ways to do this would be to go back to the constructor and do this toggle paused equals this toggle paused dot bind this it's basically going to bind this keyword or basically this countdown component to the method so that the this keyword is going to be available inside of the function the reason that we experience this issue is because this inside of this function is not available so we need to bind the component or the this keyword to this method so that this becomes available inside of it okay so back in here, let's click on pause. We see clicked. So I'm going to remove console log from there. Now, one thing I'll do in controls, just for visibility, let's also put these properties on separate lines so that's more readable, like so. And I'm also going to align them like that. Let's do the same for the other button and for a click. So just so that it's more readable, okay? All right, so just to make this clear, as you saw, the way that we make controls dynamic, so the way we make those buttons actually work, is that we pass a property called on pause toggle, and this property allows those buttons to have access to a toggle pause method. And once that method is called, and it's actually going to be called in every click, whenever either of the buttons is clicked, it's going to run that method and it's going to update the state. Whatever the pause property was before, it's going to be updated to the exact opposite of its prior value. Right, so next let's do the following. Basically, the idea is that if the value of paused becomes true, right, if uh, the countdown timer needs to be paused, we need to stop it. 
In this case, we need to clear the interval, but if the pause property becomes false, we basically need to set a new interval, right? So let's do the following here. So let's do if this state dot paused is true, we can leave it like that. It's basically going to be a true the value. And we're going to do the following. If you need to be paused, then we basically need to clear the interval. Else, we're going to set a new interval right there. One type I'll made in controls is I called the first argument paused instead of paused because the property that we pass is called paused. And that's just a little bug that we need to fix. So let's change from paused to paused. Okay, that's the one thing we need to fix. Now back in toggle paused, instead of using this form of set state, we're actually going to use a little bit different form. So let's go to react.js.org, let's go to the documentation, let's go docs, and let's go to state and lifecycle. So if you scroll down, you're going to find a section here. The title is state updates may be asynchronous. So what this is talking about is that in some cases, it might be wrong to call the set state directly with this form. So basically you call the set state method and you pass a new property and that's going to update the state. In simple cases, it works just fine. But in more complex cases, when the updates of set state are asynchronous and you need to do something else afterwards, you are better off using a bit of a different form. The form that I'm talking about is this. Instead of passing an object to set state, we can actually pass a function that basically returns an object that will update this state. There's also another example here. It's basically the same idea, but instead we pass a traditional function and then we do a return with the object. And of course, inside of that function, we could do some kind of a processing or logic that needs to happen before that state is returned. And this is exactly the case for us. I'm gonna go back in here and instead of using this form, I'm gonna do the following. Let's call this set state. And we're going to have a function here, an arrow function, actually. So the arrow function, if you go back to the docs, as you can see, it accepts previous state, okay? Previous state, and it also accepts props. And these are, these are going to be the new props that are passed to the set state function. And so inside of this function, we need to return an object, eventually, that will basically have an update to the pause property. So what needs to happen is that let's first create a variable, we're going to call it paused. And this is basically going to be the opposite of the paused property on the previous state. Okay. In the end, we want to pass the paused variable to this object so that it's going to update the state. And this form with the two curly braces and then paused is the same thing as doing paused colon paused. This is just a shorthand property that we covered in ES6 series on this channel. Once we have the new value for the paused property on the state. I'm going to have a simple if check here. So if we need to pause the timer, in this case, we will clear the interval, the old interval basically, and this is going to stop the timer. So the interval is not going to execute anymore. So we won't be updating the state every second, right? Otherwise, we need to actually set a new interval. So I'm going to copy that from component did mount. And this will basically set the interval. Every second, it's going to set our state to the new value of whatever the get remaining time returns, which is basically going to be a difference between the two dates, right? Once you save that, let's go back. And I think this should work. Let's go back to the app. Previous is not defined. Let's see, I must have made a typo. Of course, it's not previous, it's previous state. Okay, let's go back. Let's click on the pause button. As you can see right here, it pauses the timer. Actually, if you click on app, let's expand it, let's go to countdown, and you see that the pause property becomes true. Now, what if you click on resume button? That's going to toggle the property to false, and the countdown timer is going to resume. So very simple. You click pause, it stops, updates the property. When you click resume, again, it updates the property, but it updates the property from true to false, okay? Very simple. And the key here, as I said, is we need to do some processing just before we return the object. And this is why we use the alternative form of set state, where we pass a function that basically needs to do something along with updating the state. Okay. Now, the other thing I'll do is I'll stick to a bit of a different pattern for calling 
properties as well as methods. And so in this case, typical names for properties are, for example, on click, on key down, things of that nature. These are perfect for events. So this event on pause toggle, it's not an actual event on the DOM element, right? So for example, on click is the actual event. So we didn't have to define on click here. It's a built-in event in React. It's going to fire whenever you click a button. In this case, this event is going to fire whenever you call that method from the controls, right? On pause toggle. Instead of doing toggle pause, I'm going to do handle paused toggle just to follow the same on something, like on click, for example. If we had on clicked, we would have handle on clicked. That's just a pattern to follow. So use the on and handle prefix. On prefix for your events, handle for your methods. So we'll just call it handle pause toggle. And I'll rename this as follows. Okay. And um, we also need to update the constructor. Let's update the names. And again, this is just one of the ways to do this. In fact, I'm going to comment this out and I'm going to show you a few other different ways that you could have done this. So the other thing we could have done is instead of using that binding in a constructor, we could have also used a bit of a different format for functions. So instead of doing it with a shorthand method syntax, I'm going to use the ES7 class property syntax. So in this case, you would basically be creating a property called handle pause toggle. And that property is going to be referencing a function. So when you say that, this form actually allows you to have the this keyword, have the proper context or the proper value that refers to the current component without actually needing to bind it to anything as we did in the constructor. So if you go back in here, if you click on pause, this is still going to work. Click resume and it's going to resume the timer. This is a bit of a different form and I'm actually going to leave it off like that. This is the new ES7 form and it's valid. It actually works here because we're using Babel and Babel behind the scenes is going to transform that.